Well, the coaching carousel keeps going round and round. It's been a historic week of NFL head coaching changes leading up to Wild Card Weekend. To help break down all the madness and pinpoint what it means for the future of the Las Vegas Raiders, we bring in local sports radio host, Lindsey Brown. Lindsey, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, happy to be here. Well, what a crazy week it's been since mm -hmm. Black Monday. Of course, Ron Rivera fired out of Washington, Arthur Smith fired out of Atlanta, then some big surprises. Mike Vrabel out in Tennessee, mm -hmm. Pete Carroll out as head coach in Seattle, and of course, a historic one, Bill Belichick out in New England. How wild has this week been for you? It's been pretty wild because, you know, you expect those Black Monday firings to happen, especially for teams that have underachieved like Washington, like Atlanta. But then Tennessee is a team that's achieved a lot of success under Mike Vrabel. And, you know, we weren't really hearing many voices, at least from the general, maybe on the insiders kind of knew that there was some friction between him and the front office where the direction was the team uh, at least was going. And so that's a huge surprise. Pete Carroll in Seattle, iconic champion. And then Billy B in his cutoff sweatshirts. I mean, who knows where he's going to land, but it's one of those times you kind of look back, it's like, oh, life is completely different now. This has always been a constant, at least since I've been around. Yeah, eight head coaching vacancies mm -hmm. in the NFL, now bringing it to seven with the Patriots elevating linebackers coach Gerard Mayo mm -hmm. this morning to that head coach role. What did you make of that? Higher. That's interesting. I know Gerard has spent his pretty much entire professional football career being a player there and then spending uh, the last few seasons coaching and it was written into his contract that he was part of the succession plan whenever Bill Pelichick stepped away or he was fired, whatever, it was amicable. And so he has been tabbed as the heir apparent and he has some big shoes to fill. Yeah, you know, eight head coaching vacancies, that's a quarter of the NFL right there. Mm -hmm. Just one of those off seasons where there's going to be a lot of movement. Not to mention there's some coaches that are coaching in the playoffs right now, mm -hmm. like your Mike Tomlins, Mike McCarthy's, maybe even Andy Reid. Their future could be unclear. And to make the craziness even more chaotic, mm -hmm. Nick Saban, seven time national champion in college football, retires from Alabama this week. How'd that shake things up even more? Uh, I think it's really poetic that him and Bill Belichick, who have been inextricably linked throughout their careers, they spent time together at uh, in Cleveland, I think uh, Saban was underneath Belichick at that point. And so they've done documentary series with those two just talking about coaching. And so he's taken a, a step away because it's time. He, he said that this season took a lot out of him as it does. It would mean working probably 14, 15, 16 hours a day in your 70s is, is tough. And these uh, responsibilities as a head coach are very demanding. And so I think we're seeing a dynamic in the type of coach uh, that we're going to see going forward, whether that's college or at the professional level, where maybe we'll see those responsibilities delegated more and not just the concentration of power. And speaking of national champion, mm -hmm. the defending champion head coach, out of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. He's been on the radar for a lot of these NFL gigs, mm -hmm. including right here in the desert for the Raiders. Of course, he spent six years at Michigan. The last three were very successful Big Ten champions, three straight college football playoff appearances, mm -hmm. and now he could be returning to the NFL. What do you make of Harbaugh's fit back in the league? Well, I think he's a great fit, a great NFL coach. As you mentioned, uh, he, he's achieved great success at Michigan and did the same thing when he was coaching the San Francisco 49ers when he's the one that kind of ushered in. Uh, they had Alex Smith for a minute, but then Colin Kaepernick, and that's changed a lot of things, uh, at least in terms of styles in the NFL and offense between him and Cam Newton. And so uh, he's going to be the big popular name. And in terms of concentrated power structure, he's certainly going to be an example of that, a, a little bit more of an old school coach but certainly a winner at every single level. He finally won the big championship. He's, he's uh, at least put himself uh, with, that, with that same footing on resumes, like with Antonio Pierce, who won a championship himself in 2007 with the Giants. But he's the big name, and uh, if it, you're going to have to make sure you roll out the red carpet for him, so we'll see where he lands. And speaking of AP, Antonio Pierce, that's the big conversation topic in Raider Nation mm -hmm. and in Las Vegas. Going five and four as the interim head coach for the Raiders, having some really shining moments, mm -hmm. especially that Christmas Day win over the Chiefs and also closing out the season with a dominant win over the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. AP, do you think that he's the man for the future for the Raiders, or is it worth giving some attention to these other candidates like Jim Harbaugh? Well, you want to test your hypothesis, right? The scientific methods taught us that in middle school, so you want to make sure you listen to everybody and, and, and go into it open-minded because you never know who's going to surprise you for that head coaching position or for something else in the future. And so I will not uh, fool anyone. I'm a huge advocate for Antonio Pierce being the head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders. After that Minnesota game, they lost 3 to nothing. I'm from Minnesota. That game was awful. 
but he was able to get that team back on board in short order because remember they played Thursday night football. The Chargers were here and they went up and put 63 points up. So he's beaten every single opponent in this division. He's found a way to uh, bring Club Raider into the locker room. We saw legends all over the place in the locker room just this past weekend that were kind of relishing in the culture that's been grown here the last few weeks under Antonio Pierce. So for that, whatever shortcomings his resume has that I can't really see, uh, I, I give him the shot. I think he's earned it and the players are, are advocating for him as well. This time of year when you have eight different head coaching vacancies in the NFL, mm -hmm. a lot of people are stacking up teams trying to tell which NFL team has the better atmosphere than the next for mm -hmm. these head coaching jobs. How do you really level where the Las Vegas Raiders are compared to these other teams like the Chargers and even like the Patriots who now have their man for the future? Yeah, I think the comparison to the Chargers is going to be there because of a divisional opponent, but I think the Raiders are in such a better position. They uh, have a lot more cap space going into this offseason. They've hit on a lot of their recent draft picks. The Chargers are kind of the opposite where their draft picks haven't worked out super well, besides Justin Herbert, of course. But they've put a lot of big money in older players that either haven't seen the field or aren't available, or like J.C. Jackson, who's now back in New England already after it was like, what, five or six weeks that they tried with him. And so the Raiders are in a really advantageous position where they have a lot of talent in-house, Devontae Adams, Michael Mayer, all these draft picks that they've recently hit on. They're just missing probably that franchise quarterback that Aiden O'Connell is going to be competing with in the fall. So with all of those kind of ducks in a row compared to the Chargers, compared to the Patriots who are in disarray, they can't hit on any draft picks to save their life. And they've been, you know, riding or dying with Mac Jones, like not exactly the guy I would tie my franchise to. But uh, I just think there's a lot of answers that the Raiders have and a lot more freedom that other organizations don't. And for that, I think they're one of the most attractive destinations in the NFL. Well, for many on the outside looking into the Raiders situation right now, it seems like a two horse race between mm -hmm. Antonio Pierce or Jim Harbaugh as the head coach of the Raiders. However, there are some dark horse candidates out there mm -hmm. like the Mike Vrabels, maybe even like some current coordinators in the league like Lions OC Ben Johnson or even Cowboys DC Dan Quinn. Mm -hmm. But because you're coming off the Josh McDaniels era and trusting in the Patriot way, do you think it's safe to say that the Bill Belichick's in the world of the world, even Mike Vrabel, who played in the Patriot system, mm. really is off the table? I wouldn't even put Vrabel as like a Patriot way because he was just a player. He didn't coach in that system, and that's where I really think you start uh, changing yourself to being whatever that brand is. That's where that individualization is not something that is championed in a place like New England, and it's worked for them. But that's not the only way that you can succeed in this league. And personality, individuality is a cornerstone of what the Raider way is. And so I think when you talk about the two horse race with Antonio Pierce and Jim, we already know where I stand and where a lot of the nation stands. You know what, Jim's a great coach. I, I, he would be great here too. But Mike Vrabel is kind of that wild card because he is that recent coach. He does have championship pedigree. He's not part of the old guard. And so uh, it's, it's an extremely challenging decision that Mark Davis is being tasked with making but at least you're getting pretty much the cream of the crop to choose from. And so there's a lot of ways you can make the right decision, but there are some wrong ones too. And sometimes it's about keeping your home cooking and whatever is closest to your character identity. You know, as a Raiders fan, if you listen to the locker room and you hear Max Crosby and Devontae Adams saying, we want AP, yet Mark Davis still is not pulling the trigger, it may make you wonder, why is there any hesitation? This right. is your guy. He's really lit a fire under the butt of this entire locker room, including lighting the cigars as well. Yep. Mark Davis wants that star in Vegas, and he wants a splash higher right now, especially in an unprecedented offseason of coaching changes. Mm -hmm. How do you think Vegas could possibly still get that star power in this offseason, even if it's not from the head coaching move? Well, I mean, they're already working with some great star power between Devontae Adams, Max Crosby. I think Michael Mayer is going to be a big name. I think if they keep going deep to Trey Tucker and he can hold on to it, he'll be a big name. And so it, it's more about shifting where that focus is. And for so long, this team has been uh, talked about in not the most positive ways, right? This is a Raiders squad that uh, I think had the uh, team low in penalties for the first time in forever. Like that's so antithetical from what we know to be the Raider way, or at least the recent way. And so you're going to look to them probably look uh, bringing in a big time quarterback now that could be in a bunch of different markets. You have the draft, which is stacked with quarterback talent like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Michael Penix, who just played in the national championship, J.J. McCarthy. But then you also have the Kirk Cousins is the Ryan Tannehill is a little bit older guys that I don't think the Raiders are going to be kicking the tires on, but like the Justin Fields 
Now that's a possibility. Even Kyler Murray, I know that he's not exactly the rumor mill of Arizona going that direction and they're probably going to stick with him, but they're a type of team, again, that has that malleability that they could go out, trade for Justin Fields perhaps because the Bears have one of the top picks and are going to be looking to maybe move on. We're not sure. They were chanting him off the field. But uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uncertainty, and so that's why the, the Raiders being free and clear and also desperate in the right amount in the right ways is, is the uh, perfect way to kind of push them into the big decision they do need to make, which is bringing a big-time talent at the quarterback position. Yeah, and winding down now, Lindsay, and sticking with AP, Antonio Pierce is being interviewed for the Tennessee Titans head coaching job mm -hmm. after the Titans let go of Mike Vrabel. Some added competition, but also some validation mm -hmm. within the building for the Raiders where they're not the only ones who might believe in this interim head coach who has a lack of head coach experience, even coaching in high school just a number of years ago. How do you think that comes into play now that the Raiders might not be the only one interested in Pierce's services? Well, I think it's a little kick in the pants in a way, right? You have to make sure that you're doing your due diligence because he's exploring his options too, just like Patrick Graham is as a defensive coordinator. Like, all these guys have places to go. So as great as it is what they've built here, you also have to show the appreciation of what they have done for this organization. So you're going through the motions, the Rooney rule is in play. That's a very important thing to go through uh, to make sure that you get external voices and candidates in, again, for the creative kind of uh, health of this organization moving forward. It's not just about hiring for today, but it's about getting people and voices and ideas to inspire you for tomorrow. Well, last one for you, Lindsay. I think a lot of Raider fans and football fans in general want to know, what's the timeline of this, mm. right? Because you see the Patriots, they're already making their move, yep. hiring Gerard Mayo to replace the legend Bill Belichick. But all sorts of teams are on different timelines. You don't know what Jim Harbaugh is thinking right now mm. or, or how long the Raiders want to wait this out. Since you're kind of on the inside mm -hmm. as a radio host, what do you make of the Raiders' timeline? Well, I think it'll be over the next couple of weeks because it's really about waiting to see how playoff teams go and coordinators that are still, you know, focused on their jobs and their teams from this season. And if that's somebody that they've tabbed is that they really want to wait for. Because there's a lot of pushback with, you know, uh, Tennessee Titans not exploring a trade possibility for Mike Vrabel. You're like, well, you're not getting the most capital, but time is money. You want to be free and clear now to be able to go make your match. And so I, I think they're going to probably wait as long as it's necessary. But I think it's about Jim Harbaugh. I think it's about Antonio Pierce. And so maybe it's a little bit earlier, but they still have to go through all of the, the interview uh, policies and everything else. But uh, they've, they've got their answer, I think, on the inside. We'll just see if they actually keep it. So much to talk about, and it's only January, yep. right? We still got a whole rest of the offseason to go. Lindsay, thanks so much for the time. Thank you.